Welcome to our master series and the second video in our recording phase in this master series. I want to address something really quick. The first thing in the last video, we talked about the importance of getting a really good capture of a real good performance and being in time as well as possible and how important that is so you have really good material to work with later on so you can really know what it means to really be able to do magic with the processors and your abilities and the audio engineering concepts later on as you go through a production. What I did not talk about was um, uh, the quality of your equipment and its possible limitations. So we're going to address that in this video. So basically that, you know, I'm going to say this really simply. If you use your equipment properly and it's set up properly, you can get by with some fairly inexpensive equipment, whether that's microphones, audio interfaces, amps, MIDI input keyboards, guitars, basses, what, oboe, whatever, that you, if you, if it's set up properly and it's a decent piece of equipment that you can probably get by with it just fine. Um, headphones, monitors, things like that also. That most things, if you buy decent equipment, that doesn't mean expensive equipment, that you can get some pretty good quality stuff. It's like this $200 microphone is a pretty decent piece of equipment, bro. It's not a $50,000 microphone. But I know that if I get a really good capture of a really good performance that's in time with this $200 microphone, I can make it sound like a, it was recorded through a $50,000 microphone in my processing phase. I know so because the only thing that's the difference is the noise inherent in the capture, the saturation, the distortion, and the frequency response, which is just equalization. With those things being adjusted and compensated for and sculpted properly, that it's going to sound like it was recorded from a $50,000 microphone. So that is a very simple concept to get through your head, that if you use things properly and you set them up properly, that you can still do magic. So the reason why I'm saying this is because here I'll give you an example that I, I've got, I've, I'm, I'm sitting at home and I'm you, I've watched the video and so I pulled out my microphone and I've recorded myself singing my dog has sleeves, yes it does, and I get done with it and it just doesn't sound like it's Whitney Houston at the MGM, bro, it just, I don't know why, it just doesn't, you know, I mean, I don't know, it doesn't sound like it's that kind of quality, bro, I mean, I know I did a really good performance, I was in time and I was not right up on the microphone, I wasn't five miles away from it, I was six to eight inches away from it and then, you know, I was good to go, you know, pointing at the microphone you know where I'm supposed to be and it just doesn't sound like that kind of quality well that can be the same with your amplifier and you that you're playing your guitar through or whatever that don't worry about it if you got a really good clean capture of a really good performance and you did it, did it well like I was talking about that at, as we go through this recording phase don't get frustrated later on we can compensate for that and we can take care of those issues if you got a fifty thousand dollar microphone I'll explain something to you that can really help alleviate some of that frustration that Here's Whitney Houston, and if I pull out this $50,000 microphone, she doesn't sound quite right in that one. It doesn't sound quite right. So I pull out another $50,000 microphone. No, that one's not right. It's somewhere in the middle of there. I mean, it just really is. And we both agree that her voice would sound, I mean, it's not quite this one, and it's not quite that one, you know. And it's like, hmm, okay. Well, the problem is, is that it, what's going to have to happen is you're more likely going to have to do some equalization work to deal with the frequency response and equalization of it. Maybe adding some noise, saturations, or distortions. I have a video on here about noise, saturation, and distortion importance of using that sound sculpting and to fix that problem. And then all of a sudden, one of those microphones would work just fine. It's like, well, I know, but I'm, I'll deal with that later. I mean, I know it's a little bit harsh there, but it doesn't sound quite right. Don't worry, we'll fix that later on in the mix. It'll be fine. You know, unless it's really a problem and it's like she sounds like she's playing on a, singing on a play school microphone. Obviously, let's not go with that microphone. And sometimes that comes to it with experience. But that's a serious truth. So, you know... Just don't get worried about it. Get that really good capture of that really good performance in time so you got really good material. And don't be so concerned with that that it may not sound like it was recorded at MGM with a $50,000 microphone or whatever, you know, and because we will deal with that later on. And the same thing, like, let's say you're playing your guitar, your acoustic guitar, you know, or your electric guitar through the amplifier, and you've mic'd your, mic your amp, 
Make sure your guitars are set up well. Good, clean, new strings on them, set up well. The amplifier set up well. You don't place the microphone right up into the amplifier. You know, 60 inch, 8 inches away, you know, and, and you know, and it's set directly out of where it's supposed to be. And just get a good capture. Like we talked about in the last video and how we're going to talk, what we're going to talk about in the next few videos when we go through the actual recording phase and showing you how to get to that good capture. So just keep that in mind. If it sounds like crap and it's distorted and the strings are buzzing or something like that, obviously you got a problem. Or if you're trying to record some keyboard through an amplifier and it's doing something, obviously that you're doing something wrong or you're not using the amplifier correct or the keyboard correct and you need to figure out what that is so that you can get a good clean capture. And just take that into consideration and don't worry so much that it doesn't sound like it was running recorded to a $50,000 microphone at MGM because we'll deal with that and even if you're doing like midi parts and your vst isn't the most you know expensive vst on the market or your keyboard that you ran directly into your daw isn't then we can adjust that get as close as you can and do a good job with that and later on when we start sculpting and and working on it in the processing phase that you can still do magic with it if you got a really good capture of a really good performance done well in time and you'll just have to trust me on that because you know you go when i said this is a master series that you expect you know well, i'm gonna be talking he's gonna have all this outboard gear in this huge studio and we're dealing with audio engineering so basically you know we want to get a really good capture for good reports and then we want to do audio engineering and i do it in the box if you have a bunch of outboard gear and you want to do it on outboard gear with sends or whatever i don't care that's great it's the same thing i just i like it clean if I want to add noise distortion, add a lot analog emulation, I use noise, saturates, and distortion to achieve that. So I don't rely on, I don't go buy a $50,000 desk because I like noise, saturation, distortion. So, you know, this keep that in mind. So anyway, we'll get started in the next video. And we're going directly into going through getting your session set up and getting completely ready for the recording phase. And then that may be two videos. And then we'll go into the next video, one or two videos that are going to be actually going through the recording phase. And just keep in mind, we're going to be dealing with the meat and potatoes things that you need to take into consideration to do a good production. And you will it will become very obvious by the time you get done all the way through this production series of why do it that way that way that i don't you got some kind of situation or you got some different piece of equipment you're going to have to take that into consideration how does that relate to these meat and potatoes things you need to be concerned with to get a good production that may cause to have you do some experimentation or something like that and go how do i achieve that with this piece of equipment or this situation and that basically is something you're going to have to work through but you'll already have a pretty good understanding of what you're shooting for so getting there shouldn't be that difficult so peace out love i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next video when we get our session set up for the recording phase so we can get to that destination of that really good capture of that really good performance so we got really good material to work with through our production see you in the next video